For I know that my Redeemer liveth, he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And for after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Uh-huh. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh-huh. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord is good, strong in a day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You may be seated as we move to celebrate the life of this wonderful, wonderful woman. I think one of the first housekeeping things I need to ask is that we all grab our phone, turn them off, mute, put it on silent, amen. We're here to celebrate tremendous, great woman of God, amen. And as we celebrate her life, we will follow this program is printed beginning with a selection. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. This is my 
Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Scott, family and friends. Uh, I feel very honored and also privileged to be able to give the Old Testament reading for a, such a wonderful and great woman. Uh, she was very dear to me as well as to my family, and uh, she, she's just a blessing to First Baptist Church of North Tulsa, and she will be greatly, greatly missed. Our scripture for the New Test I mean the Old Testament reading comes from Psalms 121, and it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel would neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will keep you watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Thank you. Give him praises to our Lord and Savior, to our Pastor Scott, and to all of you. I repeat uh, what Deacon Williams has shared, that I am greatly honored to have been selected by family to do the New Testament scripture. And Sister Barnett certainly grabbed me by the arms when I came to First Baptist Church and told me I needed to be involved. She directed me in many ways. And I'm proud to share the first uh, New Testament scripture with you, which will be coming from St. John chapter 14. And I will be reading from the King James Version. It reads, let not your heart be troubled you believe in God, believe also in me. In the Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God's word. just like to thank the family for allowing me to come and 
to do a prayer of assurance and only knew Sister Barnett for a little while, but what I would tell you is that I had the opportunity to visit with her. You couldn't leave without your faith being uplifted. Uh, as we began to talk, and, and, and she remembered me back in my days at the University of Tulsa, I began to think, well, what is it that she knew about me that I need to be concerned about? And so, uh, you know, we laughed and, uh, with Sister Edwards and Sister Singleton and, and, and had a good time. But when a person where we look, because she's not here, it can sit here and tell you that, hey, I'm ready to go. Uh, you know, I'm an associate minister that, you know, came there to, to be with her. And Pastor Scott came, her senior pastor. But you're not the one I'm waiting on to come back. And, and, and in Hebrews, it talks about a high priest. He's the one that I'm waiting to come back for me. And, and, and she, was, she, she was ready. Um, if he comes today, if it comes next week, as far as that I, I, I am ready. And I even told Pastor Scott about how my faith is for, you know, you go in thinking uh, in, in, in a dim situation that you, you're, you're uplifted. But uh, let, us, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most graciously, Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord, asking as for us that you look down upon the family right now, Father. Father, we know that what we have here in front of us is just the shell of Sister Barnett because in your word it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Lord, I just know, Heavenly Father, that there are those, Heavenly Father, that we grieve and we hurt uh, because she's not here with us, but we come standing on your word, Lord. Um, in the dark days, Heavenly Father, in the midnight hours, Heavenly Father, when we uh, miss her, where we can't call, we can't touch, uh, we can't uh, speak, we come standing on your word, uh, where you tell us, Heavenly Father, that you are a refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in a time of trouble. Uh, Lord, uh, when the days come uh, when we just don't know how we're going to get through um, the first holiday or the first uh, birthday, Heavenly Father, you, we stand on your word, Heavenly Father, that say, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I would give you rest, Heavenly Father. Lord, uh, we come standing on the assurance of your word. And we, when we don't have anything else to touch or to grab, we just stand, Heavenly Father, on your word. Stand on your word that says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, we stand on your word, Heavenly Father, that uh, tells us, Heavenly Father, that you would give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you look down upon the family to continue to keep them in your arms. Lift them. Be with them. I pray that your presence be felt, Heavenly Father, that they know that even though Mama is gone, grandmama is gone, great grandmama is gone, sister is gone. That where she's at right now, Heavenly Father, no more pain, no more sorrow, joy, laughter, there with the Father. And that we too, for those that are in Christ Jesus, will one day be reunited. But I just pray right now, Lord, that you continue to keep them in your arms. In these are minimal blessings we pray and ask for your darling son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Good morning, Pastor Scott, ministers, church family family of Sister Barnett, members, friends, we greet you in the name of Jesus. I come before you uh, to do acknowledgments and resolutions. First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, citation of condolence for the family of Deaconess Corrine Barnett, whereas Deaconess Corrine Barnett is the mother of Carol, Jane Singleton, Brenda Edwards, Ronald Eugene Barnett, Joel Thomas Barnett, and the great-grandmother of Dominique and Sydney Singleton. We, the members of Baptist Church North Tulsa, express our deepest 
heartfelt sympathy to our members and to the entire Barnett family as they celebrate her life. And whereas, may the family be encouraged through the promise of Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And whereas Deaconess Corrine Barnett was a trailblazer, served with the Deaconess Ministry, including a stint as chairperson, served as a member of the trustee ministry, served as ch kitchen coordinator, was a member of the prayer chain ministry, was active with our church school ministry, was a member of the nominated ministry, and a faithful member of the women's ministry. And whereas, as the family reflects on their journey with Deaconess Barnett, may their love for her life, I'm so sorry, may their love for her live on in cherished memories, and through it all, may they find strength and understanding as they endure the task that must be done today and in days to come. And be it therefore resolved, it is the church's prayer that the family may be comforted through the words of John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This citation of condolence is presented to the family of Deaconess Corrine Barnett on June 23rd, 2023, prayerfully submitted by our pastor, Reverend Anthony Scott and Letitia Latimer, membership chair. Citation of condolence for the family of Deaconess Corrine Barnett. Whereas Deaconess Barnett is the mother of Deaconess Carol Singleton, Brenda Edwards, Ronald Barnett, and Joel Thomas Barnett, we the members of the Deaconess Ministry of First Baptist Church express our deepest and most heartfelt sympathy to her children. We also extend our sympathy to her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and the entire Barnett family. Thank you for standing. You continue to stand. Whereas we offer a strength and encouragement from Deaconess Barnett's favorite passage, Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Whereas Deaconess Corrine Barnett became a member of the Deaconess Ministry in May 1976 under the leadership of Reverend Leroy K. Jordan, she served as Deaconess Chair and on various committees such as Historical Memorial Chair and Social Service Chair. She took care of the communion bread and table linens in May of 2017, Sister Barnett wrote the litany for the Deaconess Rededication Ceremony. Whereas the loss is deep and the sorrow is great. We are consoled, however, in the promise of Psalms 147 and 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Be it therefore resolved that the family is remembered with prayer, love, and understanding. This citation of condolence is presented to the family of Deaconess Corrine Barnett with a reminder of the declaration of her favorite song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Prayerfully submitted, Sister Wybon Marshall, Chair of the Deaconess Ministry, Reverend Anthony L. Scott, Pastor. Thank you. From the trustee ministry, any trustees who are here, do you mind standing at this time? Whereas Almighty God has seen fit to call Trustee Corrine Barnett home, we the members of the trustee ministry of First Baptist Church of Tulsa offer our most sincere condolences to the family of our dearly 
departed trustee. And whereas trustee Corrine Barnett served with distinction for several decades and, so doing, and in so doing became the spiritual compass of the trustee ministry. She often reminded trustees through scripture to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and to lean not unto our own understanding but in all our ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. This reminder will be a lasting part of her legacy. And now, be it therefore resolved, that the trustee ministry of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, will keep the family of trustee Corrine Barnett lifted in prayer. Furthermore, the trustee ministry offers the following scripture to the family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Moreover, the next trustee ministry meeting, a chair will be left vacant and we will, and will be adorned as a memorial to trustee Corrine Barnett. The trustee ministry requests a copy of this citation of condolence be presented to the family on June 23rd, 2023. Respectfully submitted the trustee ministry. Jack Henderson, Chair, Reverend Anthony L. Scott, Pastor. Thank you for standing. Praise Center Family Church. One church, two locations. Pastor Dr. Stephen and Pamela Wiley. The family of Corrine Barnett, Dr. Stephen and Pamela Wiley, and the Praise Center Family Church would like to take this opportunity to send our heartfelt condolences to the family of our dear cousin, Corrine Barnett. It is never easy experiencing the loss of a loved one. However, we know that she is at perfect peace with the Father, enjoying her kingdom inheritance. As a younger relative, I always enjoyed talking with her as she recanted family stories and history of days gone by. She was a great encourager to me and others. She would truly be missed, but as stated in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, we do not sorrow as one who has no hope, for he who sleeps in Jesus will see, we will see again. God sent his son to heal the brokenhearted. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we ask the Father to comfort you with everlasting consolation and good hope through his grace. Respectfully yours, Stephen Wiley. Dr. Stephen Wiley, founder, pastor, Praise Center Family Church, Muskogee and Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our final uh, resolution is from the prayer chain ministry of First Baptist Church. Also, will you please stand? Thank you. Whereas the members of the prayer chain ministry of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, extend our prayers and heartfelt sympathy to our members, Carol Singleton and Brenda Edwards, and the entire Barnett family, on the homegoing of our devoted member, Deaconess Corrine. And whereas it is our prayer that the family will be encouraged through the words of Psalm 73, 23 to 24. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by your right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And forward, you will take me into glory. And whereas our hearts and thoughts are with you, each of you, in your time of sorrow, may her love for the Lord, her faithfulness to family, her commitment and service to First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, and the Tulsa community, and her kindness to friends be a loving and lasting memorial to her life. Deaconess Corrine Barnett was a prayer warrior, and her faith in God was strong. She always found a way to encourage each of us to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the word of the Lord. Be it therefore resolved that the entire Barnett family has our understanding and support. We pray that Jesus 
the man of sorrow and familiar with suffering will ease the family's grief. May his clarion call come unto me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Bring, uh, may it bring you peace, comfort, and cherished memories. The prayer chain ministry directs this resolution be presented to the family on this 23rd day of June, 2023. Prayer submitted. Prayer chain ministry chair, Sister Mary Walker, Pastor Reverend Anthony Scott. Acknowledgement. The family of Sister Corrine Barnett wish to thank all who have been here to provide comfort during this time of bereavement. We want to especially thank those who took such good care of our mother near the end of her journey here on earth. The staff of St. Francis Hospice, the staff of Potocelli House, and we, her final arrangement was entrusted to, and we also thank Jack's Memorial Chapel. This concludes our resolutions. I did get permission from the family to say a few words on Sister Barnett. And I pray that this phone doesn't uh, send another alert. It just shows that our phones may not be the best source. But I, I felt like I had to say something because Sister Barnett was so very special to me and my family. I served with her as part of Clemmy B. Hill Sunday School class, Deaconess Ministry, trustee ministry, First Baptist Church North Tulsa prayer chain ministry. Served along beside her. I loved her. I knew that she had a heart for serving the Lord. She loved the Lord and was a scholar of God's word. She often provided nuggets of wisdom, whether it was during our Sunday school class, our deaconess meetings, trustee meetings, or Thursday night prayer calls. She often gave God thanks for us being able to communicate on, uh, through, through technology. She was one who said she didn't believe in cell phones in church, but it changed her when the pandemic hit, and even before. She said sometimes people can be reading their Bibles on the phone, and we can't judge people. And when the pandemic hit, we started having Sunday school and prayer chain ministry, uh, over technology through the phone and she was always there she was present on our Sunday school call a few days before she passed away she was she was always there and um, she was careful not to point fingers at anyone else without including herself she would often say I'm just speaking for Corrine she says, sometimes a mouth gets me in trouble. <laughs> then she would proceed to render her opinion regarding the situation. <laughs> Sister Barnett was a good and faithful servant who would do anything and everything she could to be of service to others. I will miss her smile, her friendship, her nuggets of wisdom, along with her honest and open opinion. As we say our final goodbyes to Sister Barnett, may we find comfort in knowing that her spirit lives on in our hearts and our minds and in those she touched. In closing, during our Sunday school classes, she would often talk about songs that resonate with her spirit. We would look those songs up online and read the words to the songs. Today, in honor of Sister Barnett. I would like, believe it or not, to sing just a short portion of a song that speaks to my spirit for Sister Barnett. I am free, no longer No chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's 
such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. First Baptist just found him a new choir member. Amen. Amen. Uh, two things before we move forward in our uh, service. One, can we please turn our cell phones on vibrate or silent? If you don't know how to do that, turn it off. If you don't know how to do that, find somebody next to you and have them help you. We want to give this family the opportunity to mourn and to celebrate their family member without uh, many distractions as possible. Amen? Amen. Thank you very much. And also, there is a black Mercedes, I believe, that is parked on this side of the church, on the north side of the church, that is blocking the driveway. So if you can uh, go and move that, uh, we will greatly appreciate it. Uh, now, now, as we move forward, it is time for us to uh, read. Uh, the program asks us to read silently the obituary of Sister Barnett. Uh, and while we are reading that silently, uh, the part was singing medley uh, of her and some of her favorite hymns.
When I in awesome wonder Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I will bow in all adoration. Giving reverence to God our Father, Christ our Savior, 
Holy Spirit, our keeper and comforter, acknowledging the ministerial staff, the music staff, the deacons, deaconess, trustees, officers, and members of this wonderful church, to this family, you know how great God is. And probably never more than right now, as he comforts your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Throughout this journey of pastoring, I've discovered that there, there are some eulogies that are easy to prepare, but difficult to deliver. this being one of them. I noted a couple of things as we were listening to that wonderful medley of hymns uh, in her reflection of life. It says in that third paragraph that her love for family was exceeded only by her love for God. Next paragraph, it says after she joined First Baptist, she gave of herself in service in many unselfish ways. And then, there towards the bottom, not the last paragraph, but second to the last, it says, throughout her life, she continued to rely on God, her source, Jesus her Savior, and the Holy Spirit her guide, until the day they welcomed her home. I want to call our attention to the Gospel of St. Mark, 14th chapter, and I want to begin reading with verse 3. Being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. There were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of ointment made? If I can caveat the words of this woman, what better we use something than for Jesus? <laughs> for it could have been sold for more than 300 pence and then been given to the poor and they murmured against her. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble her? She's done a good thing. You have the poor with you always. But he also said, but me, you don't have always. But then notice in verse 8, Jesus said, she has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also what she has done will be spoken of on her behalf as a memorial of her. You may be seated. Very familiar passage of scripture, but what strikes me, we often focused on the alabaster box. As I was preparing this eulogy, I was just drawn to what Jesus says in verse 6 and verse 8. Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you troubling her? Then he says in verse 8, she's done all she could. And so I want to talk about leave her alone. She's done all she could. Very striking comparisons in this text and this wonderful woman's life we celebrate here on today. As we focus on this incident at, in Bethany, it is literally one of the last in the earthly ministry of Jesus. Jesus was in the little village of Bethany, a village he visited quite often. It was one of his homes away from home, one of his favorite places 
to visit Bethany, located two miles from Jerusalem on the southeastern slopes uh, of the Mount of Olives. It was here uh, at Bethany uh, that Jesus frequently retreated to the home of Mary and Martha. You do remember that Jesus retreated to the home of Mary and Martha on one occasion. One sister was busy about serving. The other sister was busy about focusing on the Lord. One sister that was serving said, uh, listen, uh, my sister ain't helping me. The other sister said, I want to pay attention to the Lord. What we learn in this text, there's nothing wrong with serving. But we need to understand it's more important to spend time with the Lord than it is to serve. Uh, there's got to be some times that, that we spend literally not just serving the Lord, but loving on the Lord. Uh, and as I read those little nuggets from reflection of our life, we are celebrating a woman. Yes, yes, she did serve the Lord. But more than just serving the Lord, she loved the Lord. Uh, make no mistake about it. Yes, she served with all of her heart and with all of her might for the kingdom of God. But what she did and loved more than serving the Lord is she loved the Lord himself. Uh, and listen, when you love the Lord and when you're serving the Lord, listen, that, that's the service that brings glory to God. It, it was at Bethany in John chapter 11 where Jesus was accused of being too late. Accused of being too late. You know, we always say, you may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be there on time. When our back is against the wall, that, that we, we, don't, we don't want him to be late or on his time. We want him on our time. But at Bethany, Jesus was not late. He was on time because he wanted them to know and us to know even today, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, listen, here is invited to dinner at the house, not of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, but at the house of Simon the leper. Mark, Mark says the Lord sat down to eat. And, and, and the story is very telling and striking because Jesus is in the house of a leper. What it tells us is that Jesus often sits with afflicted ones. And, and right now you are afflicted with grief. And as Jesus uh, demonstrates uh, his willingness to sit with afflicted ones, uh, you know that, that even right now, as your hearts are heavy, as tears are in your eye, uh, you're not sitting there alone. God is your refuge and strength, a very present help in your time of trouble. I, I don't know about you, family, but I know you ought to be glad that, listen, you couldn't make it through this all by yourself. There has to be a rock that is higher than you, that is undergirding you. There has to be an anchor for your so, so, so he's so concerned about the human condition. Very striking comparison here. Very con so much concerned about the human condition that he's willing to bring limits, guidelines, and boundaries. Jesus didn't care what other folk thought. He cared about doing what needed to be done. So the Barnett didn't care about what other folk thought. He's just concerned about getting things done. And so, uh, so many comparisons. While Jesus is sitting, says, in comes a woman, boldly, not fearing what might happen. That's a striking comparison, because she was a bold woman. Never fearing what might happen if she did something that brought rules, went against ritual, went against guidelines, all she knew was she loved the Lord. And whatever it takes to get to the Lord, I'm going to do it. Listen, uh, there's no greater way to honor her life than to say, ain't nobody going to keep me from Jesus, because can't nobody do me like Jesus. This woman in boldly, not fearing what might happen. Out of great gratitude, she wanted to demonstrate her appreciation to Jesus for what he had done. Mark says, listen, the woman has an alabaster box of ointment. So we have a box, we have ointment. 
First thing I want you to know, it says that this alabaster box was very precious and costly. To have an alabaster box to begin with was indicative of her sumptuous taste and her lavish love for the Lord. That's my first point. She had a precious and costly alabaster box that was indicative of her lavish taste and love for the Lord. I, I, I think that's no better way to describe this woman that we celebrate. In fact, she's not here. She's with the Lord. But she had a lavish love for the Lord. Uh, so much so, this alabaster box was made out of a precious stone that was uh, manufactured in Egypt. So she had a box. Well, here's the second thing I want you to know. It's not enough simply to have a box if ain't nothing in it. See, a whole lot of us got the form of religion, but ain't nothing in it. Listen, as a pastor, I, 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 when I went to see her, Malcolm Reverend Williams said the same thing. Uh, uh, she, she's laying there, unable uh, to move one side of her body, but she's just saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Listen, uh, you find out whether someone has the form of religion or whether they have the substance of faith uh, when they are at that critical moment when hospice and doctors and medicine and family can't do nothing. When you get to that point, are you simply saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's all he was saying. She had more than a precious box. She had some precious ointment. Now, now, now when it says she had a precious ointment, it means that, 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 it means that box was not empty. And Mark is very careful to say not only was the box precious, right, but also the ointment was precious and costly. Listen, I want you to know something. A, a lot of us want to smell good and we want to be fragrant. <laughs> but perfume and sweet fragrance are only extracted by agitation. Perfume and sweet fragrance are only extracted and produced by agitation, trouble, and trial. What makes her such a sweet fragrance is that she endured. She was tried, and now she has come forth as pure gold. Uh, the Bible says, precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints, a sweet fragrance. How do you become a free, sweet fragrance, a sweet aroma to the Lord? You got to endure agitation, endure folk talking about you, uh, endure folk uh, not liking the way you serve. But when you endure, you'll come forth as pure gold. But then, but then also notice, uh, the purpose of her visit. She breaks the alabaster box, pours the contents on the head of the Savior. The people get upset and say she has wasted it. She basically says, Jesus says, what she has done is good. Because what's the point of having anything if you're not willing to use it for Jesus? It was her desire to demonstrate her love for the Lord so much that she breaks the box, pours the perfume on his head, her way of saying that all that she has, she wants to give to her Savior. Her way of saying that her whole life belongs to the Lord. Uh, her way of saying that she's willing to pour the contents of her life before the presence of the Lord. Her, her way of giving her gratitude uh, for what the Lord has done for her. And that's why we celebrate this woman, because she was willing to pour the contents of her life before the Lord. She may not have had everything some others might have, but what she did have, she gave it all to the Lord. She broke her box. She poured it upon the Lord. 
because she loved and served the Lord. Remember I said Bethany was just two miles from Jerusalem, southeastern slopes of the Mount of Olives. But listen, I believe if she could speak today, connecting all of these incidents with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and uh, this, this incident at the house of Simon the leper, she would ask the question, Reen Barnett would say, have you ever been too busy to meet with God? Busyness robs us of our quality of time with God. Uh, has Jesus uh, ever accused you of being too busy to come for a dying man? Here at Bethany, busy, busyness and rest collided between two sisters. Here, Jesus' feet were anointed by a woman. Listen, uh, some choose to sit at the feet of Jesus and be absorbed with his presence. Listen, there is a time to serve the Lord, she would say. But she would also say there's a time for simply enjoying being in the presence of the Lord. And I believe if Sister Corrine Barnett could give her parting words, she would say to us, family, and the rest of us, our greatest need in life is, is not simply to serve him, but to be with him. Listen, I'll close with this. Give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Throw your soul's fresh, glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he, young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give up your best to the master. Give him first place in your heart. Give him first place in your service. Consecrate every part. Give and to you it shall be given. God, his beloved son, gave, gratefully seeking to serve. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Not else is worthy his love. He gave himself for your ransom, gave up his glory above, laid down his life without murmur. You from sin's ruin to save. Give him your heart's adoration. Give him the best that you have. Gave of her best to the master, the savior, the lover, and the redeemer of her soul. And now she is a sweet fragrance in the presence of her God. Can you imagine? She closed her eyes saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But then she opened her eyes in glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for this gracious, precious, splendid woman of God. Father, we know that precious eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. And so God, in our grief, remind us that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Father, she is ultimately healed now in a place where there's no more trouble, no more sickness, no more dying, no more pain. The former things have passed away. Comfort this family. Comfort their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank God.
Jesus, Jesus.